Welcome to Blonde Cards and Crafts. Let's make something together. Hello crafters, welcome to my craft room. Today we're going to make this 5x7 card and it's a pinwheel card or pinwheel tower card. Now I've made this one to fit in a 5x7 envelope and we're going to make this card in collaboration with Antonio from Antonio Makes. So I'm going to leave a link down below to Antonio's YouTube channel as well as his Instagram and Facebook. And I hope that after you watch my video, you'll pop on over to Antonio's channel on YouTube, Antonio Makes, and watch his pinwheel tower card. So on my scoreboard, you can see here I have a piece of white card and it measures seven by five. And I'm going to score it a couple of times now my cardstock is 300 GSM cardstock and you can use whatever weight you like. So I'm scoring it at three and a half, then I'm going to score it at four and a half. And I like to give a double score because the 300 GSM cardstock is quite heavy. I'm scoring it at five and a half and at six and a half. So we have a half inch tab there on the right hand side. Next, I'm going to take my card and I'm going to fold it on our score lines. So we're going to fold and burnish the score lines. Lovely. And this is going to be the base for our pinwheel card. That little tab there of a half an inch is going to stick this piece together. So we have three sides to mount the rest of our little card pieces that we're going to use and you can either use double sided tape or liquid adhesive there onto that little tab and I'll show you an easy way to stick that down and fold it so that it goes evenly. So if you put glue here along your tab then fold it literally in half like that then you know that your tab your little half inch tab there is stuck down in exactly the right place. Lovely. Okay, so we need three more pieces of white cardstock to finish our pinwheel card base. So I have three of them here and I'm just going to set them out onto my scoreboard. And each of those needs to measure three and a half by five. So our pinwheel card when it's standing up is five inches tall. And you can adapt the measurements on this and make your pinwheel as big or as small as you like. Antonio's card is going to be smaller card than mine. So if you pop over to his channel, you'll be able to see what size card that he's going to make. Next, we have these four black cards. They measure three and a quarter by four and three quarters. And they'll sit on our white card like so. Then next, I'm going to take some patterned paper and I'm going to have one of these as a white piece for our sentiment. And then three of these will embellish our card. So these measure four and a half by three. And like I said, we'll have three patterned paper and one white card and that will be so that we can stamp and embellish that with our message to the person who's receiving our card. I like to take some of the scraps. Um, I've taken a piece of the um, scraps and I fussy cut out this image. It matches all the rest of the images in our patterned paper. You can see there how I fussy cut that out and I'm going to add that to our white piece. And that way then it'll embellish that white piece of card. So it'll look like that. And then we'll have a stamped little happy birthday wish above that. Okay, so next then we want four pieces of black cardstock. And these pieces, they measure two and a quarter by four and three quarters. And on top of that then we want four pieces of patterned paper. Now I have my four here and these pieces all measure two by four and a half. These two images I've punched out from the pattern paper. The cat and the sentiment piece have been punched out using a two inch punch and then the black rounds for behind them have been punched out using a two and a quarter inch punch. 
but you can put on there whatever you like. I've also put some foam tape behind this and I will put some foam tape behind the little cat image there once I'm assembling the card. I'm going to use this Phil Martin stamp set. It's called Sentimentally Yours and I'm going to use the Wishing You a Very Happy Birthday stamp just here. And this then will fit nicely onto our white piece of card that we have our fussy cut little flower image that's going on the bottom. So that's the sentiment I'm going to use. And I'm also going to die cut out a sentiment on your birthday. It's from the signature Sarah Davies collection and I'll show you that later. OK, so let's go ahead now and assemble our card. To stick down my little piece here, my tab, I'm going to use my art glitter glue. And I love this glue because when it dries, it dries clear and it and it's not tacky. So there's no residue left behind and it's a quick grab glue. So once I press down, give it five or ten seconds, it's stuck down. So I'm going to evenly spread some of my glue along here. Then I'm going to fold it over on the second score line. I'm going to fold that over with the tab facing down. And then once I add a little pressure down onto that tab, give it a chance to adhere and set. We can then stand up our card base and I'll show you how it looks then. This is our base that we're going to stick down our three extra white card panels to. So I'm just making sure now that our tower part will move to the right and move to the left. So when it's opened and closed, so when it's flat, it'll be like this. And then when it's open, then it'll be in its square shape like so. So that's perfect. Brilliant. Now all we need to do is, like I said, stick on our white card panels and they're going to stick down onto these pieces here. So just like that. So you can see there I have my card base. I'm going to lie it flat and I'm going to take this piece and only stick it down to one of our panels there. So I'm going to bring the glue up to the score line, but not over it, because we're just going to adhere our panel down to this side of our score line. And once I have all my glue on there, then I can stick down our piece of three and a half by five panel. So I want to make sure everything's lined up. I want to bring it up so that it's in its open position. And I'm going to make sure that's set in there nicely and glued down. Now you can use a double sided tape. That way, once you put it in place, it's stuck down. I like to have a little bit of wiggle room. There's not a whole lot of wiggle room with the art glitter glue but it'll give me enough just to make sure that's in the right position. And once that's in there, then we're going to press that one down. And then we're going to add some more glue to this little um, panel here on the left. So it's literally right just up to the score line. We'll add our liquid glue there. And again, we'll add another one of our white panels, our white cards. And we'll sit that down nicely and make sure it's all lined up at the top and bottom. And you can see there that sits in there perfectly. That's the great thing about the liquid glue. It allows us a little bit of wiggle room to make sure it's sitting in correctly where we want it. And you can see that there now it's set in there nicely. And of course, I'll just do a little bit of faffing. Add the last bit of pressure on that. And then we can move over to this one. This is our last one now. So we need to lay that again down flat. And that way then we can add our last little panel. So we're going to put down our glue literally between the score line and the edge there. And we'll put glue all along there then for our panel. Now I know Antonio is going to do this a little bit differently. He's actually going to make the tower part and then add our, the four pieces to that. But I thought it would be different. It would be cool if you saw a different way of making it. So definitely pop over to Antonio 
um, to his YouTube channel to see how he makes his version. I know it's a little bit smaller than my card, so it'll also give you an idea not only of another way to make it, but of another side to, size to use. So I have all my four panels now down there and I'm pretty pleased with that. All we need to do now is add our mats and layers and embellish it. So I'm going to speed everything up now because we're going to stick our lovely pattern paper down onto our mat layers. And the papers that I'm using today are from the Paper Boutique. They're called Rainbow Buddies and you can get a whole set for each of these. I have got the paper kit and that came with the decorative papers and the toppers and I also got the embellishment pad and it's great because you get a whole load of beautiful patterned papers, sentiment, toppers, the whole kit and caboodle is in there and it makes for some lovely cards and I'll leave links to the products that I use down below in the description as well as links to Antonio's pages. So now I have my Misty out and I'm using my Versafine Onyx Black Ink and I'm going to stamp my sentiment. And I'm going to do it two times to make sure I have a nice even stamping. Lovely. So I'll give that a chance to dry now while we adhere down all our mats and layers to our card base. So you need to decide where is your front and I've just chosen a side there. This is the panel that I want to be my front panel and I'm using my Kalal liquid glue to stick this down. The Kalal glue when it dries, it dries really solid. It leaves no tacky residue and if you have any little bit oozes out from behind your card, you can just wipe it away and it wipes off. So I've now turned the card over and I've put my sentiment on the back and that's to make sure that where my front of the card is, as far as I'm concerned, my back of the card is going to be where my sentiment is. And then it's just a matter of sticking down all the rest of our mats and layers. And that's what I'm going to do here. My round sentiment and the round image of our cat I'm going to put foam tape on those and even though that they are both got foam tape which will give a little bit of dimension to our card it does fit into my five and a quarter by seven and a quarter envelope. Now that envelope is a ready-made envelope for a five by seven card so I'm just using that and even with the bit of dimension my pinwheel card fits nicely into that envelope. But you don't have to put any dimension on if you don't like to. I just love dimension on my card. So this is where I stick down my little focal point to the front with my sentiment of wishing you a happy birthday. And I'm going to pop that down there. Now I did debate die cutting out some extra leaves and tucking them in around and the whole lot. But for a finish, I don't think it really needs it. But you can embellish your card however you like. So now I'm going to stick down my sentiment here that I've die cut out on your birthday. And I like to use my art glitter glue for when I'm doing things like this. Just little tiny dots of glue behind each word and that'll stick it down. Now this could indeed have been my front page or my focal page, but I just felt with the gray space there above our roses, it needed to be filled with something. And so that's why I die cut out this on your birthday sentiment. Now I'm chuffed with that. I think it looks lovely. So we just have our little cat here to put down and I'm going to pop this one down here on this pattern paper. I'm going to put some little foam um, circles behind it. And don't forget, if you use these foam dots, you can also use the piece of foam around the dots as well for a bit of dimension. This little cat reminds me of my sister-in-law Caroline's cat. He's such a little cutie and he's called Bugsy. So there we go, there is our pinwheel card or pinwheel tower card, depending on what you'd like to call it. 
I love each of these panels and I love the pattern paper that we've used with it. The sentiment I think goes nicely on the back there. And this is going to fit perfectly, like I said, into our um, envelope for a five by seven card. You can see there, I'll just pop that in there. It fits perfect. The only thing I want to do now is embellish the front of the envelope. And to do that, I'm going to use some of the paper from the paper pad. I love the flowers embellishing the top and bottom of this page. And I thought I could fussy cut out one of these and trim the bottom of the envelope with it. So I've sped it up, but I've left it in the fussy cutting that I'm going to do on this. And I'm not being perfect, guys. Some of my little borders around the flowers and leaves are a little bit wider or a little bit thinner than other places, but it doesn't have to be perfect when you're fussy cutting. And I like to give a little border rather than cut around the leaf or the little berries, etc. on it. I find when you give a little bit of a border around it, it makes it that bit easier for cutting out. So I'm nearly finished now. You can see that I'm kind of stopping and starting at the leaves and cutting up to the point and then cutting down and around. So we won't use all this. I'll be able to trim off what I don't need. I'm just going to use my glue. And again, I'll use the art glitter glue to glue down this piece to my envelope. Now I want to make sure the edges around the leaves leaves and my flowers stick down well as well as the edge of the envelope itself so i'll use plenty of glue again the art glitter glue it isn't track tacky so if some of it oozes out from underneath it won't leave a tacky residue on our envelope so that's it that is our pinwheel card and this is a five by seven pinwheel card and our lovely matching envelope don't forget to pop over to antonio's channel antonio makes on youtube i leave a link down below to his youtube his instagram and his facebook channels and thanks antonio for asking me to do this with you i've really enjoyed it if you liked my video please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and if you're a subscriber, thanks for subscribing. If you're new to the channel, you might click the bell icon down below. That way you'll be notified each time I post a new video. You can find me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. And that's it, folks. Until next time, stay safe and bye for now.